All right, let's get started. So this is the first episode of my Free Code Friday series. And what I'm gonna be talking about this time is fixing a bug. At least that's the first thing on the list and there may be other things and that's fine. But this is the first thing I'm gonna do. And <clears throat> the bug that I have is in a framework called Rox. And what Rox is, it's a framework that lets you do um, mocking. So if you don't know what mocking is, um, mocking is basically just saying, hey, I've got uh, something being passed into my object that's an interface, so it's a dependency, but I don't want to actually use a dependency in my unit test so I can create a mock. Uh, there's libraries that have been around in .NET for a long time called MOQ and Substitute, and they work absolutely wonderful. They're, there's nothing wrong with them at all. What I wanted to do for this project was, you can kind of see it here, it's Rosalind, which is a compiler API for .NET, plus mocks. So it's this idea of taking what is in, um, what is in Rosalind, was in the compiler API, and using that to generate the mocks. If you look at like in substitute or mock, what they use is, um, I think it's technically Castle Windsor, um, but there's, there's a, a package out there that allows you to define proxies, and those proxies are what those frameworks use as their mocks. Uh, that's all done with reflection emit, and that's not easy. I've actually created, when I first was starting to do stuff in .NET, um, one of the first books I ever wrote, which was called um, CIL programming, which is all about IL. Uh, this one up. So this this is one that even though it says the last time we did four years ago, this is something I've had done for like 14, 16 years. Um, so so I, I know how hard it can be to do that. And you do one little thing wrong with your op code and everything breaks. And so that kind of sucks. So I wanted to do something where it was a much easier experience for me to create dynamic code. Uh, but not just create it, but also potentially debug it. If I have bugs in my code, I can easily step into my code and go, what did I actually do that was wrong? Or at least generate it and look at the output, and it's much easier to parse and go, oh, this is just C-sharp, and that's that's what I was missing here, and the errors make a lot more sense. So so that's what I've done with this. Is Really, it's in the spirit of MOQ to some degree, but it's mostly about um, having the underlying engine using the compiler API to have my um, mocks generated and uh, created during, typically during tests. Okay. So that's what this framework is. So what's the bug? Uh, the bug was actually one that I found when I was playing with another framework called Pose. And this is a framework that somebody wrote that allows you to do um, mocking of non-virtuals and statics. So what rocks and substitute MOQ does, they let you mock things that are virtual because what we're all doing is inheriting or creating a mock that's inheriting from the thing that you're giving us. So we have to be able to inherit from it. It's, so it's gotta be an interface or a non-sealed class. And the only thing that we can actually override are virtual members. Okay, well, for most things like dependencies, those are usually abstract types or um, interfaces, so that's easy to do. Uh, potentially, you may want to do this with non-virtuals or statics, and so Pose does this, but it does it in a way that, I guess, doesn't use the profiler API, which is quite interesting. So, in any event, I, I was looking at that, and I thought of adding it to Rock so it has that capability, but that was starting to get away from the whole point of this was compiler API, API plus mocking that would add a different dimension into it. And I didn't think that was necessarily the right thing to do. It's a cool framework. You know, I just didn't know if, if I was, I'm still debating it, adding it to this, but I'm leaning towards not right now. While I was playing with it, I decided to do something like what you see in the, in the bug report. And basically it's saying, even if you have a class where you have two virtual members, but you only set up an expectation for one of them, and you end up calling both of them on the mock, you'll get an error. Now, 
I actually tried to do a recording of this video first and it got stuck and so I had to start over again, um, which is what you're seeing right now. And what I got stuck on was a debate I had in my head, which was, well, wait a minute. Is this, you know, should this be an error? Um, you know, should should this be an error? And, you know, should, should I be forced to mock this? And what's interesting is, is I went to... Um, I downloaded MOQ. I, I have in my project here um, a little sketch pad. And so what I did is I, I basically did the same thing that I was doing here. And I said, what what does mock do? What does MOQ do? Do, do, do they, does that library force you to, to um, inherit that or not inherit that? Um, do what they call a setup for both methods or not. And apparently um, they give the same behavior that I'm wanting, what I'm doing here. So um, I'm actually gonna just do that again because I was, uh, I wanna make sure in my head that I've actually got the, uh, the right thing in place, so let's see. And some people are maybe screaming and going, <laughs> if anybody's watching this going, what in the world are you? By, by the way, this is funny. MOQ has like 22 million downloads. If you look at my package, rocks, 1.75. So a little bit of a discrepancy there in terms of popularity. That's fine. Though. So if we grab that, install it, and we'll come back to my code here. And so I'll throw this class there, comment that out for now. This is just all crap code that I'm doing. I wish I would usually actually have this you know, like in its own file, but I, I just want to show this for now. So if I say var person is equal to a new mock of person to mock, and then I say, uh, so, so the mock behavior is going to be strict. I always do it as strict. And then I'm going to pass in my name on the constructor. That's what it does for constructor threw me too. I forgot that you can pass parameters in, but you have to do it here. Whereas in my framework, you do it when you actually create the mock. Um, we, we can see here, th this seems more natural to me, but whatever. Okay. So then I say person setup. Um, I'm going to do get name here. No, not get hash code, get name. And it returns, I have been mocked. Okay, and then I say var uh, chunk. I'm going to say chunk because I know the code I'm going to copy over is uh, name that. So if I grab this, and this is not rock, this is person, and I do verify all here. All right, so and get. I want to switch these around because I think it's the get other name that's going to fail on if I remember right. Oops. Ah, there we go. It's late and my keyboard skills are dying. All right, so let's try this. And of course, since I got I got a new machine, so some of my uh, setups are not what I want. Let's make that a little bit bigger. There we go. Um, actually, do I have all the things set up here? Yeah, I usually make that 500. Quick edit mode, blah, blah, blah. I think that's good enough. Okay, so what you can see here is it's giving the, the exception, which is saying, hey, you didn't set up an expectation with get other name. So actually, what I, um, what I decided is this isn't a bug because well, if, if mock does it, then why, why, why should I change my behavior to something else? So first of all, let me just go back here and just undo all the crap that I did. Just all, and then come back to the bug report here. And basically what I'm going to say here is this is okay. Uh, this is saying that, hey, if you want to do something with a virtual on a non-abstract class, then you have to set up the expectations. You just do. Uh, and, and quite frankly, the when I was thinking about this the um, this afternoon, and I was thinking about actually doing the, the bug fix, um, 
it was going to be quite uh, laborious, so to speak. So, um, so I said, well, nah, I'm not going to do that at all. <laughs> and what I mean by laborious is, well, if this is the, if I have to fix this for for methods, and I start thinking about what the fix was going to be, the fix was going to have to be something like in the code that I generate. If it's a non-abstract class, and I call a method, and I didn't set up an expectation for it, that's okay. Just call the base classes implementation. But I would have to do that for potentially properties as well, and potentially events. And I start going, this is going to suck because I have to do it everywhere. But since I just realized, well, mock does it this way, then why should I have to do it this way? So hold on while I type in the bug report. <laughs> um, just discovered. like what I do. The, the famous phrase, it's by design. <laughs> so, um, so I'm just going to think about this a little bit more. Um, and, and I'm fine with this because it, it's, not that, it's not that I don't want to you know, dive in and, and fix a bug, but, um, you know, the, the best code that you write is the code that you don't write. And in this case, I won't have to, I, I know I'm not going to probably be removing code and I'm probably going to have to add some code. And it's just, it, we get a little hairy and messy. So I guess it's the way you view this, you know, um, does it make sense? that if you have a type that you want to mock, does that mean that any interactions with it, you should set up expectations? And I can see we well, could kind of maybe fall to one side or the other, but I'm, I'm starting to think, hey, is this even a bug? And e you know, even I started looking at this before I even thought of, well, let's look at what MLQ does. I started even questioning in my head, well, wait a minute, is this even a bug? does this make sense? You should actually do an expectation. So, you know, yeah, I think this is by design. The last thing I want to do though, is if I come back to my code, let's, uh, let's grab this again and shove that up here. And then I can just grab this cause this is me and, uh, not under the framework. So we'll put that there and now let's run that and this should fail. And you notice it's a little slower at first. I'm going to explain why. Okay, so it actually does. And then, like, what I did is I actually flipped these two around like that. And if I did that, so I should see, yeah, I see the first one, but I get a not implemented exception. Yes. Okay, cool. All right, and then the last thing I want to do, come on, is let's actually do this. Let's say get name. And then let's actually mock this. another and this should work good it does so there 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 is no spoon there is no bug <laughs> so that's actually awesome um all right cool so yes i'm going to close that out and that should get rid of one issue here yes it does okay so so that's kind of a bust in a way. I'm just gonna check my time here. 15 minutes. So I'm gonna got 15 minutes left. So there's a couple of other things I can do with the Rocks project here. Um, and one of them is when I was just opening this up and I noticed if I come back over here, I was just I had this project open and I went to arg here. And one thing 
that I find um, interesting with C Sharp is that with version 6.0 and the fact that they moved to the compiler API, that the evolution of C Sharp is is still there. Uh, C Sharp had a lot of little features added to it. So things that may not seem that grandiose or large, um, but there was a lot of them and a lot of little, really cool little features. And they've been doing that with 7, 7.1, 7 7 7.2. There's potentially a 7.3 coming and then there's a C Sharp 8. Um, the, the ability for them to, to pivot and move and have the community help with features and, and fixing things too because it's all open source now, that's all awesome and that's really cool. So yay, that, that's, that's wonderful. Um, and I try to keep the language um, as, as fresh as I can make it. In fact, if, if I go back here, what I'm getting at is if I say this and I say edit the project file, I should have, yep, Lang version latest. So I'm always picking up the latest version of the language. And what I noticed in just opening up this file is if you can see right here, there's a little um, Dustin Campbell from Microsoft. I've heard him call this smudge driven development. Um, this isn't an error, but what this is saying is if, if I'm either going to throw an exception here or I'm just going to return the default of what T is. Well, I don't need to say this anymore. Um, in fact, in in C sharp now, I can say things like int x is equal to um, the default. And now it's yelling at me because I don't have x being used, but that's okay. Okay, that's fine. The point of what I'm saying is this default thing doesn't fail. So you no longer have to specify the type thing in, in the default statement. What you can do is if I actually get the code fix to come up, you can see it's saying, hey, take that away. Take the T away. You don't need that. Okay. But th this is why I love the compiler API and the analyzers and the code fixes is because I can say here and I can say, do it across my entire solution. This one thing, and, he, and you can see I have a couple of cases here as well. I could just make these saying default, okay? So actually, let me go back here because I'm gonna do the right thing. Um, I'm gonna say, let's make a new branch. And I'm gonna make this branch, uh, let's just call it code cleanups because I can't, it's late at night and I can't think of a better name. So what, what I want to do with this is potentially dig through the code, just start looking through a little bit of here and there and see if I can find some of these um, more. Spend, spend a couple more minutes just looking through some other files and seeing can I find some more of these things that, um, that will potentially make my code a little bit cleaner. Okay. So we'll create the branch. Move to the branch, yay. All right. So. Let's first do this. Let's say, do it across the entire solution. How many did it find, actually? Let's see. Get string. Oh, that's kind of cool. Although I bet most of these are actually in uh, tests. But that's okay. I mean, that's. This is going to be an arg. Okay, so it's in my arg class here. And why am I struggling? Just pull this down, Jason. Is there a way to, you can tell I don't, I usually don't have like preview all changes, so I don't have this open. So this, and then class one. Why is there a class one? Oh, that's in the, okay, never mind. I know what that is. That's okay. It's a terrible name of a class, but um, I know why that's there. So there's going to be just a couple in the actual rocks library. And this doesn't change performance. This isn't going to change like, um, the actual execution of it, it's still the same thing. It's just, it's going to be a little bit less code, uh, just a tiny little bit less. So let's say, handle it, boom, gone. And rebuild. Okay, make sure I am in release mode, and I am. Let's come back up here. Let's say startup projects. And I got to do multiple, and it should be my test projects, right? Yes, they are. Okay, so let's let those run. Make sure nothing breaks. 
And this is also something I'm, I'm going to fix later on too. Um, this is another thing I want to address with these first couple of videos is to, to, to clean up the, the testing that I'm doing here. And I'll explain that later. So eventually they should come back and say, all your stuff works. Oh, that, oh yeah, I remember why. Um, <laughs> that, oh, I love this. I love this. This is awesome, actually. Um, I noticed this was happening, and I couldn't figure out why. So I actually have another bug that I got report, and I'm glad that I actually did this because I totally forgot about this. So, um, okay, that's fine. So this only happens when I'm doing tests using the .NET Core platform, the .NET Framework platform, because Rocks is a .NET standard uh, package. It's not a uh, specific to one. So it's NS2. And then I have two projects that run tests. This is actually, for some reason, not working with .NET Core. So uh, does it tell me? Yeah, it tells me. Okay. Um, so let's come back here. And I want to make a milestone of, because I'm on 3.1 right now, so I want to make a milestone of 3.1.1. Uh, I don't have a due date. I'll just create the milestone. Uh, because this is actually going to be a bug fix. So uh, it, uh, the, the other bug that I was actually trying to fix this time was going to be under 3.2, and I was going to do this anyway, of having kind of like that 3.1.1 version, um, because reasons. Okay, so let's make a new issue. Um, name so I don't okay so let's uh, grab all this because I don't want to lose it yeah of course the formatting is all craptacular but that is fine I'll clean it up here real quick Oh, that's just, oh yeah. Yeah, okay, cool, all right. Um, I do want to do this, though, because it's a block of code. Okay. Um, fails with the .NET Core runner, not the framework one. Okay. So this is, of course, science me because I'm the only one here. It's a bug. It's a high priority. Um, projects, not project this. So I want to make sure it's 311. Okay, so I'll submit the new issue. Boom. All right, so I got a bug. Okay, so come back here. I want to actually commit this. Um, clean up some default. Uh, yeah, whatever. All right, cool. So I did that. How much time do I have left here? I've got seven minutes. So we're, we're getting a list here. Um, I'm going to want to do some more cleanups. And we're going to want to fix this bug. I want to add um, analyzers to this project. And then I also want to clean up the test. So I, I got a fair amount to do here. Even if I never fix that bug, I still got a couple things to do. So that's that's awesome. Okay, let's go spelunking in the code a little bit more. And this is going to be a little bit more... Um, the, the problem with that is you can't... You know, the things that are just um, suggestions, you don't, they don't even show up in this list at all. So that's uh, a little a little sad. Um, there's one other setting I want to make sure I've got set here, right? Uh, text editor, C sharp, general, advanced, full suit. Okay. Um, okay, cool. 
the, the thing here though is that I don't know where else I might have some. So this is kind of just a complete crapshoot, you know. Um, where or oh where could I have things in here that may not, that somebody's telling me, hey, you want to do it this way. Don't see anything here. This is when it gets really boring. Um, I, I've always wondered that why do I have, no, I don't have something called expression. Why do I have, to, if I've got this as system link expressions, why do I have to name it this way? There was a reason. Oh, do I have, yes, that's why. Okay, I knew I had a reason why. Um, I couldn't do that because I actually have something called expression as a property here. So that doesn't work. Okay, that's fine. And this is the problem with this these smudges because I'm not going to be able to really see them clearly. And this just becomes, you know, as, as I'm already quickly getting annoyed with this because I have no idea if there's anything that I could actually change um, that's telling me, hey, you really want to change this. So my patience is, is running thin already. Um, These would actually get, yeah. As you might have seen as I blasted through this, so a lot of this may seem very similar. And that's another thing, yet another thing that I want to do is say, hey, is there a way that I could potentially get some, and, and I, I want to say reuse, but doing reuse for no good reason is not a good reason. Uh, you know, I used to be very um, diligent about saying, hey, if I'm repeating code, put it in a shared method or something like that and reuse it. But there's there's a trade-off there. And sometimes, you know, as you can see here, this code is copied the same here and the same here. You know, it's the same thing all the time. So is there really any benefit? Um, in fact, as I'm looking at these, there's actually a pattern here in that the handler info information that I'm making is really the only thing that is different between all these. So I could, you know, I could, oh, I'm loving this. Actually, now that I think about this, what I could do is basically say in this method, grab this out, put it into another one, and have it give me a way to say what is the info that's going to be created and then I handle that for them. Okay. I'm going really far beyond what I thought it would. So. <laughs> um, let's go up here um, and to my to-do list. I got lots of things to do. You're seeing all my to-dos. Yay, I'm showing this to everybody. So here's my free code Friday. So, um, so this is actually the whole thing with rocks. So we're going to do rocks. This is done because I didn't do it. Um, code cleanups with smudges and other things I see. And that's just going to add to the list, which is, hey, in uh, rock core actions, why not create a common method that all the handle methods will use. Um, then I said I, I want to do the uh, the bug fix with the .NET Core tests. But before I do that one, the, the one I want to fix, no, I should do that because it, it doesn't matter. And then um, I also want to do a unit test project cleanup. And I already have a issue out there, uh, which is to change how I'm doing these things. Um, you know, it says project cleanup, and I should have written this down before. What was the other one? Oh, um, adding FX cop. Not FX cop. The code analysis stuff that's been there. The new, the newer stuff. Um, and I got that in place. So actually, I think that's a great list. And if I look at my time, I'm pretty much near my 30 minute mark. So that's good. All right. Um, so this has been an interesting first episode. Um, don't really know if I did a lot, but I, I'm actually kind of excited because I got a lot more material I can go through. So uh, thanks for listening. If you got any comments, um, please add them. 
And as, as I do these videos, I'm also looking for, you know, ideas that people may have to say, hey, do this, why don't you check this out, or you missed this in your code, because um, then that gives me other things like, you know, I can work on and, and potentially do as other videos who maybe will say, hey, why don't you check this out, or um, well, whatever the case may be. Try this new language, I don't know, throw, throw out ideas there. Um, so put them in the comments. Um, thanks for watching, and hope to see you in my next video.